the rest of the story. Joe Smith was just beginning to relax and enjoy the 4th of July holiday when there came a knock at the front door of his Cleveland, Ohio home. He was expecting no one, but he peered out a window to see who was there, and the young man at the door was a business associate, a 23-year-old small-time manufacturer from Canton, whose name was Herb. Joe Smith was one of the backers who'd put Herb in business, so Joe opened the door. But Herb's face was grim. He tried to smile. He said, I won't waste any more of your time than I have to. And then the young man proceeded to explain that their little company was on the brink of bankruptcy. Joe asked, now, are things really all that bad, or perhaps was Herb just worrying too much? But Herb shook his head. And he withdrew a small notebook ledger from his coat, and he opened it to the current week. He said, I hate to have to show you this, but he pointed to July 2nd. Joe stared at the page, his eyes widened, cash on hand. Two dollars and six cents. So the entry read. How could this have happened, Joe wanted to know. Well, it had been a shoestring outfit from the start. Herb said the only other two partners involved had put up more than a few hundred dollars apiece. There was simply not enough initial capital to keep the business afloat. Joe asked if Herb had spoken to the other two partners, and the answer was yes, but they'd rejected his plea for additional investment, so now it was all up to Joe Smith. The company needed just a little something to tide it over. Maybe $50 would do, but Herb would need it by tomorrow, otherwise his employees could not be paid, and they'd walk, and that would be that. Well, Joe sat down, and he didn't say aloud what he was thinking, but he was thinking that he, Joe Smith, was really a butter and egg man. He had no business being in any other business but butter and eggs. If he were smart, he'd get out before Herb's folly dragged him to the bottom, but the rest of the story is that Joe Smith did not turn the fledgling businessman down. He did give Herb the $50 which he had asked for. And he prayed that somehow it would make a difference. That $50 made a difference. Oh, there were still some hard times ahead. But Herb got past the hardest of the hard times because a butter and egg man named Joe Smith had faith in him. Now it's true, Joe did not know a great deal about chemicals, as Herb did, and $50 was not an insignificant loan in the summer of 1889. But there was something about that clever young chemist that intrigued Joe Smith. And considering Herb's unassuming appearance, perhaps it was a premonition. Because today, as I recount this experience, I'm reflecting on the eventual incredible success of that tiny shoestring chemical company. And hereafter, I hope when you hear the name of that company, you'll recall July 4, 1889, when kindly Joe Smith emptied his pocketbook to make a life-or-death loan to 23-year-old Herbert Dow, and the Dow Chemical Company was born. Now you know the rest of the story.